Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Lord. I am a freelance illustrator and artist and in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to go from an analog pencil sketch and some tips and tricks on that and then into digital via Fresco and Adobe Illustrator to add some color as well. Let's have a look. Okay, so we are at the stage now where we're going to do some concept work for an idea that we'll kind of take digital later. So at this stage um, it's important to um, pump out as many ideas as you possibly can as quickly as you can without sort of pushing them too far uh, and what's really good with that is to use pencil and paper so you can see here I've got this um, sketchbook I've got a bunch of pencils I'll talk about those in a sec um, but I'm really just kind of laying out basic concepts here I'm doing these little illustrations for kind of like a little icon or a logo that's going to be like an illustrated logo of some kind of little demon head or something along those lines um, and so I'm just really working super quick to try and get some ideas out as fast as possible. Uh, and where sort of pencil helps with that massively is it, it, it's actually almost a little bit limiting in that digital really offers you these possibilities that are kind of endless and you can add color and you can add all these things in. Um, at this stage, we're not doing that. So it's really important to, um, when you're doing this, these kind of concept works, try as much as possible to work at an analog stage uh, and what I mean by that is pencil and paper and not digital um, and that's going to allow you to kind of lay out as many different sketches as you possibly can uh, and so what I'm using here is very basic tools as you can see I'm using uh, an A3 sketch pad um, this one is uh, 85 GSM so that's grams per square meter and that refers to the thickness of it but it's got a little bit of texture to it as you can see um, when I do my gradients here, you've got a little bit of a kind of a, a grain to it and that's what you want. You want that kind of natural look. Um, and I'm also using a 2B pencil, HB and 6B. So these things refer to B stands for brittle and H obviously is hard. And what you see is if I'm using my 6B, for instance, you'll notice that I don't have to press down very hard to get a very dark line and I can get a really kind of smooth gradient that way but I'm not pressing down very hard and it's leaving a lot of lead on the page it's a lot softer um, so that's my 6b but with a 2b for instance it's you know you can still get that same darkness but you're going to have to press down a lot harder to get it so these kind of things um, are great for sketching hb 2b is usually the go-to when you're laying down basic sketches because you don't want the line to be too dark uh, you want that line to be relatively kind of light um, so that it's not getting in the way and you can add detail um, as much as you want. There's another thing that I use here sometimes and this is a, a blue pencil. So blue pencil is a bit of an animator's trick where if you guys kind of see this you'll you'll notice that you probably don't see it too much and that's kind of the point of it when I'm drawing with this blue pencil is I'm pressing down a lot harder than I would here just so you guys can see it on the shot but what it kind of does is it allows you then to come around with my 2B pencil for instance and you know go over that and this is kind of like a pre-sketch before I do my sketch so if I'm keen to get a little bit more um, structure going on that line work before I lay down the final version then blue pencil is going to be really uh, a great tool to do that. The, the other advantage about blue pencil is that it won't show up when you go to grayscale or when you photocopy which is why animators used to use it because it actually doesn't show up at all um, and so you can do a really rough sketch and then clean it up on the same drawing without having to worry about that drawing kind of coming through there. Um, and then there's obviously this mechanical pencil so I'm using quite a fancy one but traditionally you kind of tap the end here and it comes up um, and this is just a little bit of a, a lead stick. I don't know if you guys can see that just here um, there's a little bit of a lead stick that comes out uh, and this is a 2B1 so this is just a little bit more precision. Um, a lot of artists use this to get much cleaner lines. Um, you can use this for sketching but again it's it's maybe just a little bit more for kind of precision work um, and for like you know pure drawing a little bit more kind of realistically in that sense. I'm just kind of drawing um, abstract shapes here but you can use that if you want to but I would say traditionally you'd want to just use a 2B or HB um, and to just go to town on, on those sketches. Now you'll also notice, uh, and this is a little bit counterintuitive, I've got this thing that looks like a little bit of a pebble. Uh, what this is is kind of like, like a silly putty kind of like blue tack looking thing. Uh, and this is called a kneadable eraser. So as much as you probably want to avoid erasing at this stage because you're, you're just you know not committing to anything, you're just 
you know, creating as many ideas as you possibly can, as quickly as you possibly can. Um, and so erasing kind of goes against that principle where you really want to, you know, not focus on finalizing anything and just smash out as many ideas as you can. Erasing is going to slow you down in that sense. But if you do absolutely need to erase, um, then a needable eraser is going to be the way to go. And, and so the advantage of this over a traditional um, urethane eraser is that you, when you erase, it's kind of picking the lead off of the page. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm having to rub down a little bit harder, but it's, um, it's picking the lead off the page and it's not actually leaving any eraser shavings on it. So that avoids me having to brush my page and then get lead all over my hand and smear my drawing. Uh, but what it also does, which is really cool, is if I show you guys, I can do a really kind of quick gradient here. Um, it's not just used for, you know, correcting mistakes. And I think that's the thing with drawing is you want to get used to this idea that erasing is not for fixing mistakes. It's actually with a kneadable eraser, it becomes more of a drawing tool. So I can mold this into kind of like a point and then I can just tap the page and it's going to stick to the lead and pull some of that lead off. So you can see that area now is a little bit lighter and that lead goes onto my um, eraser. And so it's actually really cool for, you know, lighting, lightening up areas or even doing drawings. There's a lot of artists who actually, you know, will put down a lot of charcoal or a really thick layer of pencil and then come in and literally draw with their kneadable eraser back in with some kind of highlights. So it's, it's kind of the opposite of drawing with um, shadows and lead and then you're out bringing back you know light into the drawing uh, but that's the basic premise of that so what we've got is a bunch of sketches here we've done a whole bunch of really quick ones um, we haven't sort of focused too much on shading or proportions or finalized line work uh, and so what we're ready to do now is to take a photo of one of these and bring it into Fresco so we can actually finalize that a little bit more and put in some digital linking so let's um, jump into Fresco right now Okay, so at this stage we've got our little sketch selected. I'm going to do the, the little fugu um, that we did before uh, and I'm going to take this into Fresco now and, and clean it up a little bit, maybe add some um, little bits of detail in here. So the easiest way to do this in Fresco is just to click on the little kind of picture frame icon. You've got a few options here uh, and we're going to use the camera which is really cool because it basically means you don't need a scanner anymore. And I'm just going to literally just going to photograph this and then just say use photo and that's going to load it up into Fresco. Uh, I can resize that a little bit, put it into the middle of my page and then we're done. And so we've got that now um, all ready to go in Fresco. So I can start to you know, add some a, a few things here and there. So let's jump into a bit of a screen recording and see how that works. First thing I want to do is just to drop the opacity on this. So we're going to use this as a base. Um, here, so just click on the options and I'm going to lower the opacity just so that I can still see it but it's a little bit out of the way uh, and there we go. So we've got a couple of different things that we can do here. Um, first off, Fresco has a few basic kind of pencil brushes which are really cool um, that we can use. So um, I've got one here that I've used before um, for sketching. So you've got a few in here, pencil and pen. Um, obviously the pencil is going to be the way to go here. Uh, and so we've got that selected uh, and you can see that it's automatically created a new layer when I've done that. Uh, and so what it kind of does is it's basically just really just a pencil layer. Uh, and this is really fantastic for, you know, if you need to add in some detail into here and you weren't kind of sure about how to do that on your actual drawing or if you kind of jumped into Fresco a bit too fast. So you can do a few things like this and it's got a bit of pressure sensitivity and tilt sensitivity as well if you want to do some big areas of shading. So all these things are really cool. Um, if you want to do your sketching. So you can actually even do your sketching um, straight into Fresco if you want to without kind of going through analog. But as we discussed before, um, the point here is that you want to try and sort of get as much as possible done without sort of finalizing and Fresco will invite you to kind of do this and, and easy, very easy to erase and so on. So we're, we're not going to necessarily focus on that, but it's just good to know that you can actually do all your sketches straight into Fresco. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this layer uh, and I'm interested in inking this up in a digital way. So I'm going to go to my vector brushes here. And so in my vector brushes, I've got a few um, that are available. 
I usually go with my favorites, so I've added these to my favorites, and I've got a basic taper here, uh, and that's the one I'm gonna use. And again, what you'll notice is as soon as I start painting, it will create a new layer for me, um, super easy to go. I also wanna increase the smoothing a little bit. By default, it's usually set to um, 50. I usually boost that up to like around about 80. Uh, and what smoothing does is it'll take your line from kind of I had too many coffees to something a little bit cleaner and smoother, which is what I like to work with in, in my um, designs. So here we go, we're ready to ink up. Um, so I might just um, speed things up a little bit, just because this usually kind of takes a little bit of time and it's a pretty straightforward process. So um, let's jump into a time lapse. All right, so we've got our little fugu fish now. Um, I've written fugu down underneath in hiragana, added in a little kind of um, skull and crossbones because these guys are, are pretty poisonous, even though this guy's pretty cute. Um, but I just wanted to touch real quick before we jump into Illustrator and start putting in some color into this, you'll notice that I've got a um, little bit of an issue here where I've crossed over two lines. And so because this is vector um, as opposed to bitmap and because this is the way we've done it so that we can take this into Illustrator very quickly. Um, there's actually a really cool tip that I can show you guys, which is um, this guy here, which normally kind of changes the options. If I hold down and then slide down, you can see that kind of goes into a full circle. And what I can do is I can erase that intersecting line. Uh, and so again, just to show you guys how that works is if I've got a line and I've got that happening, if I click drag down, and just cross out that line, you can see that it just kind of very conveniently deletes the lines where they connect. Uh, and so it's a really nice inking tool for things like this, where if I kind of go over things, I can actually just delete little bits that are kind of sticking out. And this is a really helpful feature in Fresco for you. So at this stage, we're ready to export this into Illustrator um, and start adding in some color. And sending to Illustrator is super easy. All I need to do is hit the share icon here. Uh, and the third one down is send to Illustrator and that very conveniently just sends it straight to Adobe Illustrator as a vector file ready to color up. So um, let's jump into Illustrator and check out how that works. So that file is now loaded into Illustrator and this little um, pop-up menu comes up when you send from Fresco to um, Illustrator uh, and just gives you a couple of options. So the one that you're looking at is the top one where it's gonna convert layers to objects. You don't really ever wanna go for the flatten um, layers into single image because that will flatten your artwork and we're after a layered vector artwork. So we're just gonna hit okay here and it's gonna open up my file and you can see that it's um, pretty much exactly what I had in Fresco. Um, I've got a background image and I've got my photograph that I've used and then very conveniently I have got this vector layer all ready to be colored up. Um, so I'm just going to delete the um, both of these guys so that I'm just working with my background layer here, um, with my vector layer sorry, and I'm just going to, I've got a few little kind of scraps up there that I can just delete. Um, and so I'm almost ready to go here. Last thing I really need to do is you can see that when it exports like this, it actually saves every single stroke as an independent uh, vector shape. And what that can mean is a lot of kind of layers in your panel here, um, which can maybe potentially slow your computer down a little bit, but it's just a little bit of clutter that I don't need. Um, otherwise, it's actually really convenient that um, Fresco does that in other scenarios, but I don't need it to, to do that here. So uh, I just need to go to my Pathfinder panel here and just unite those. And you can see that that's just kind of blended all of those shapes into one. Uh, and so now I'm ready to put some color into this. Uh, next thing I need to do is very simply just go to my Life Paint tool. So I'm gonna use the Life Paint Bucket tool here to create a bunch of different shapes. So um, all I need to do is take some, uh, pick some colors here. Uh, so I want to kind of like a bluish green for the, the top of this kind of fugu fish. Um, something like that, maybe a little bit more blue, there we go, and open up my swatches, and I'm just going to drag that into my swatches, and then I'm going to select a color. This is important to do when you're 
um, doing a live paint like this just to choose your colors before you do it all uh, it's just going to make your life a lot easier so really literally just two colors and you can see here that they've loaded up into my live uh, paint bucket tool here i've got the green and that um, yellowy kind of cream color and if i use my left and right arrow keys you can see that it switches in between those um, and it's really kind of super handy to do and so all i need to do now is just i'll zoom in a little bit um, and i'll just click on these areas and because they're closed off paths illustrator is finding those and just filling in these for me so it's super fast to to kind of paint like this uh, and then i can do the bottom part of a fish and we're pretty much almost done now uh, i'll do the skull as well just for good measure there we go and again i can just switch in between those colors as i need um, and so oop, I forgot a little bit up here and here and that is our live paint done so we've got a pretty really quick way of adding some color into this but I um, just want to add a few final touches before this is ready to go uh, and that's going to be a little bit of shading um, and highlight so I'm just going to literally just paint these in Illustrator something that you could also do in Fresco but because we're in Illustrator I'm not going to switch again and I'm just going to go straight into my um, blob brush tool here which is this one and that's just going to allow me to do some quick painting so there we go we're pretty much done uh, and this is ready to be exported to a client to print on t-shirts or stickers or anything else that you want um, yeah super quick and easy that's it for today's video guys um, so just to recap we took a sketch pencil and paper sketch took it into Adobe Fresco to ink it up and then took it into Adobe Illustrator to add some color and export it. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys got something out of it. And until then, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.